Exploring Colombo in a three-wheeler, four-wheeler, 20-wheeler, and a 100-wheeler. Sounds interesting? Watch on. Hello and welcome to Katsu Travels. I talk about interesting trips that families can do in an affordable budget. Today, we're going to Sri Lanka and we're going to sample some interesting experiences. So uh, we've just got down from the Colombo Fort Station and uh, I was looking up what is the best way to get around this city. Uh, the tuk-tuks or the autos, they start with a fare of 150 or 200 which is for like one, one and a half kilometers and then it can get pretty expensive. So uh, given there are three of us, I thought it's better we take an Uber and Uber is actually uh, pretty affordable. For this journey of about four kilometers, we're paying about um, 160 Sri Lankan rupees and uh, that way I think it's a quick and efficient way for, to get from point to point. We're on our way to Cricket Club Cafe and um, that's one little tip if you're in Colombo to try out Uber apart from the fact that you have the uh, local transport. Thank you Nandu, that's Mentos for me. Give me. How mean Nandu. Give me that. This is my favorite flavor actually. Mango? Nah, lemon. Lemon. My favorite flavor. Okay. It's Mentos. Take the next right onto AO, Colombo, Batacoa Highway, then slide right to stay on AO. So we were on our way to the Cricket Club Cafe. It looked like the location had been changed. When I came last in 2012, it was in Bambili Pitiya. Now, it was in a new location called the Flowers Road. So we reached the Cricket Club Cafe in about 10-15 minutes from the Colombo Fort Station. The first thing that kind of strikes you is the image of Don Bradman as part of their logo. And of course, the big star through which you have to enter the Cricket Club Cafe. And as a cricket fan, as you enter, you see this little signboard where it points to all the important cricket grounds around the world. Basin Reserve, to the MCG, to Eden Gardens, to the Queen's Park Hole in Trinidad and Tobago. You name it and all these popular stadiums with their directions are there here. This is what greets you at the entrance. We decided not to sit in the main lobby, which is kind of open to sky. We decided that we will go inside one of their themed rooms, which has the teams India and Sri Lanka. In fact, they have different rooms themed for different teams. Some of the upper tires are themed after England and South Africa, but we started with India and Sri Lanka. This room that you're seeing here is uh, the Australia themed room, which is on the uh, terrace. And right below was where we decided to start our exploration, looking at memorabilia and of course, catching up on some lunch. It's an old world thing, isn't it? To be enamored by cricket photographs. But that's what my generation has actually grown up to. Seeing photographs, seeing memorabilia like bats or autographs. For example, this one has uh, the Pakistan team during one of their uh, tours much earlier. So this is a mixture along with the Sri Lankan and the Indian theme. This is, for example, Gavaskar and Azuruddin. 
and autographs of uh, the Indian team that had come on a certain contingent back in the 80s. And of course, the god of cricket, Sachin Tendulkar, is uh, omnipresent uh, in these photographs as they are adorned on the walls. The right side of the wall is, of course, Sri Lanka. Uh, famous image of Sanat Surya in the 1995 series and, of course, uh, a signed bat of the 1996 World Cup that Sri Lanka won. So, has a lot of, lot of fond memories for uh, Sri Lankan fans. And uh, the other side is adorned by some more Sri Lankan jerseys. The coloured one, in fact, was the jersey that they wore preceding the World Cup. And uh, another image of uh, Champaka Ramanayaka and uh, Arvinda Deserva back in the 92 World Cup. Uh, Sri Lanka were clocking more air miles because of the amount of travel that they had from New Zealand to Australia. It wasn't all cricket gazing. We also went and had a look at the menu card to see what we could order for the afternoon that lay ahead. The menu card was interestingly uh, a bat that was autographed. It looked like a bat rather. And it had all of these famous players and it was quite an exercise to figure out who these players were. And then as we flipped it, we got to see some of the interesting items on the menu which had Sangakara, Nasser Hussain, Mahela Jayavardhane, uh, Beefy being Ian Botham and of course uh, Ian Chappell and Tony Gregg. But yes, mine is the vegetarian section. Um, Vivian Richards, Chandra Paul, Kieran Pollard, Alan Knott and uh, a few other cricketers. So that was the, the menu. Some of the burgers had uh, an Indian name which was Chetan Sharma. But uh, other than that, uh, pretty interesting names for uh, the kind of dishes that are available. Do, do let me know in the comments which dish you did you like the most or which dish appealed to you the most. Some iconic images from Vivian Richards, Brian Lara. This is the West Indies section that is there um, in the uh, middle part as you approach the first tyre. And so, from West Indies, we take a little flight to go up the stairs and go reach the Australian section. The Australian section has uh, a few memorabilia which is similar in terms of autographs, in terms of shirts and in terms of iconic photographs. This one starts with uh, Dennis Lilly and uh, it also has the Queensland uh, boy which is Alan Border and it goes to a few other images of Shane Warne who was uh, shown as part of Victorian cricketers. The owners of the Cricket Club Cafe are believed to uh, know some of the cricketers very well which is probably why they were able to get autographs or pictures or memorabilia like bats and balls of um, various other cricketers. The number of rooms that the Cricket Club Cafe has seems to be more than three or four. From the main hallway, I just proceeded to go upstairs and uh, through the stairs, I found out that uh, there, there's another eating area. And that eating area basically has memorabilia from South African and uh, Zimbabwean cricketers. So here is the uh, iconic South African shirt uh, back from the 1992 World Cup. And there's some you know, uh, images from Gladstone Small, even though he you know, represented England. Kepler vessels, then a, a former contingent which has bats and autographs. So these were some of the early South African uh, photographs and autographs. And uh, suddenly in between, like we saw Gladstone Small, there is some English representation too. This is the Australian side that went to South Africa in 1997. And... Uh, as we see here, this is the Zimbabwean side back uh, in the inaugural test match of 1992. And uh, these were some uh, shirts uh, signed by ex-Zimbabwean cricketers. I very clearly remember Gavin Rennie, uh, a spectacle bowler. But that was it. We've uh, had um, a lot of exploration. Now it's probably time for some fun and games with Nandu down below with some board games. Adapari, Adapari. Hey, not zero. Okay, okay. You could have brought done this, but I'm sorry, you're too late, Nandi. You're just too. What late. do you mean? We inge bota, inge bota, you're the one. Inge bota, inge bota. Oh, hey, hey, hey. But I felt that if I didn't do that, then I cannot do it. Oh, okay, I'm going to leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it. Oh, no. This is not done. Nandu has won it twice, yaar. He's won it twice. In between those milkshakes and those board games, 
we managed to spend close to about three hours at the Bricket Club Cafe. Now with the whole afternoon spent, we went out to explore Colombo in whatever was left of the day to maybe capture a sunset by the little sea that exists very close to the Cricket Club Cafe in a little place called Kolupitiya. We spent the better part of the hour closer to sunset, just train gazing and of course sea gazing. After watching the trains, I decided to call it a day and take a local bus to get to the fourth station and collect my luggage. After reaching the fourth station and collecting my bag, I found a direct bus that went to the airport. We played around with a little device to give feedback to Sri Lanka tourism. We had a lot of time to kill because we had a late night flight. I hope you've had as much fun as we because it was 9 episodes long and I hope you've seen a little bit of Sri Lanka through our eyes. Looking forward to more such travelogues and looking forward to your comments on how you found the whole series. Till then, it's me and Nandu saying ta-da. Please subscribe to Catch Your Travels on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook and of course my own blog www.kachutravels.com.